are here visiting us for the very first time, I would like to formally, officially welcome you to the house of the Lord. If you lift up your hand, we will support you quickly and we will welcome you in the house of the Lord. Any visitors in the house? You have visited us for the very first time. No, you are not serious. All right, can I ask all our visitors to stand? Please, all our visitors stand. Lord bless you. Thank you for coming to worship with us. There is someone walking towards my brother here. You see, why, why I got shocked that my brother stood is because if there is anybody who enjoyed our worship today, who went round a couple of times, is our brother. Thank you so much for making our worship great. The Lord bless you. Thank you, thank you so much. It is a guy celebrating a one month anniversary. Alex and uh, one month. Please, one month. Why don't you come, let them see you, one month. How you look after one month. This guy got married on the 13th of December. And so they are celebrating one month anniversary. By the way, they have just shown up today. They, they have not been in church, but they have shown, they are saying we are back. See to Akaribishi, Alex. Praise God, church. Praise God again. Thank you, Bishop, for everything last year was just awesome. Close the year in style. We're grateful. Thank you for everyone who came. Uh, we are one month old and we are celebrating one month of marriage. And uh I'm sorry. flights. Uh, there are more flights there because somebody said in Kisumu we don't arrive, we land. So I, I was so uh, we had a wonderful time there. Then we went to Kericho. Uh, we had uh, Obet and Kisi and then uh, finally we came back on Friday night and then uh, I am blessed. Hiyo sauti nili mebarikiwa. Mbiti rani yako, hiyo ni sauti ya bisho. Hiyo barikiwa. 
So I'm glad to be home. And um, those that had left like Alex, they come back, they find us in a tent. Uh, so we bless the name of the Lord. So, so those that will miss us for the next five months, when they come, they will not even know the tent issue. They will come back to the church itself. For that to happen, we are still asking you, give and give and give until you feel you have given. Let it cost you something. Amen? So on the 7th, which is next Sunday, please, come with a gift that will shake you or shock you. Amen? And give your best. Bless the name of the Lord. I was also told by someone that there are some of you that came last Sunday thinking uh, we, we will do the anointing. But I tell you the anointing process is too long. And um, if we did it here, I don't know when we'll finish. But you can still give your offering, your 2020. Put it in an envelope, put it 2020. And um, come when I'm walking out, I'll bless you. Or meet me somewhere at the Pali and Papa Hakuna Jam. I'll bless you. Um, amen. But thank you for those that actually gave. There are some of you that have already given. Believing God for 2016, a year of great overflow. And some of us have started getting the overflow, and some of us are refusing where we are because it is like the devil does not want us to sense the overflow. But I'm so glad for some of you parents, the Lord has opened doors for you, for your children, where you never expected. Those are the overflow. Amen. And even there is no child in this church, no child will miss to go to the high school of the best high school that the Lord has chosen for us. So let's just be open and the Lord is going to guide us to those. We also say if your child is taken where you don't want, you refuse it. Actually, there is someone who was taken to Kuala, refused it, now they are going to end it. Yeah, you just refuse it, tell the Lord, I never prayed for that. But don't say Kuala is a bad place. Bless Kuala. Bless Musamweni. Bless it so hard. Say somebody else who qualifies to go to that place, let them take the child, your child's position, but your child comes back to the school that you have chosen. Atuta hongana, atupea nikitu. Watatupa position zetu kareka jina la yesu. Last time when I was speaking, we ended it into a place. We said strongholds are there. And sometimes when a stronghold has taken too long in your life, what you do, you start excusing yourself. And after you excuse yourself for a while, you start justifying it. And after you justify it a little bit, you make it legal. You legalize it. And after you legalize it, now you start fighting for it. And why we cannot get to our great overflow is because of some of those things. And you stand to a place. Yani you, you, and I told you, some of the things that have happened to us and they have condemned us are pieces of papers. Papers. <coughs> papers. A piece of paper that was written to you. Now, and you agreed to be labeled immaterial. D minus material. You re and you can refuse and start working towards the direction that the Lord has for you. Because there are some of us here that E was it, but today we have diplomas. Because God is not... You just wake up and say, when I did it, I was not on my mind. Actually, some of you are fighting with your parents. Actually, some of you are going to school for your parents. But then after you failed, you discover, ah, it was me. Now you go back and you cannot fail because nobody fails when they are paying school fees for themselves. So the point is, you get to a point you say, no, I am not corrupted here. We have our, our counselor here. Our counselor is the brightest guy, first class honors, you know, and he never, he, he, he was with first class honors all the time, even when he was working at KU as an administrator. But you know what? Sometimes we think to thank God for the, for the new constitution, which demanded, <laughs> which demanded the potential within the counselor to come out. Yes. Amen? Yes. And we are praying that it will happen to your place of work, because some of you have first class honors within yourself, but you cannot push. It's, it's there. But I pray that God is going to bring it to pass. And by the way, not all of us will go to school, by the way, but, but, but uh, some of us will have to. But not all of us are geared that way.
because even where you are, the Lord, the Lord can still bless you. But I'm saying, if you're not comfortable where you are and it is education, walk to the nearest university and start certificate and then go diploma and then go amen. And we thank God that, uh, um, hallelujah, they are taking care of us. So stronghold, I say it, the longer stronghold is allowed to remain, the more difficult it is to deal with it because we kind of uh, get to a place and it's like we are in agreement. Yet we agree. And now from there is excuse. Some of us even excuse uh, why we are we got what we got. Uh, because maybe we give excuses and so on and so forth. But there is no excuse. Actually, I, I am an immaterial. I'm not an average student. You know, you can get to a place you agree that you are an average student. And once you agree you are an average student, something happens. You will always get a C. So you have to agree I'm not average. I am a little more than average. I like one of the preachers that uh, founded Deliverance Church. Every time you greeted him, you said, Hi, Apostle, how are you? He said, Above average preacher. <laughs> because sometimes you can be an average preacher and you stay there, you stay there, stay there. So remember that it is the longer that stronghold that is holding you is allowed to remain. So we need to rise up and resist some of those strongholds. The enemy's plan is to establish a stronghold in an area of our life and then hold us in bondage to it as long as we allow him to do so. So that is his whole idea. He wants to get hold of us. And, and, and not only that, that, that stronghold becomes a bondage. He, he bounds ice. And that we, he, 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 but it is as long as we allow him. So I'm, I'm preaching to people that will refuse to allow the devil to hold us bondage in the mighty name of Jesus. Ignored or unchallenged strongholds will produce stunned spiritual growth. If you allow it, your growth spiritually will be a standstill. The good news that we have is that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We can trust him that there is no stronghold that God cannot help us overcome. Bless the name of the Lord. Yes, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. He makes victory possible. And it, we, we also uh, read in 2 Corinthians, where we read chapter number 10, that our weapons of our welfare are not just the normal ones, but these ones are strong and mighty to making the devil flee from, from hands. In other words, if you like, strongholds are the devil's playground, and we need to shut them down. We need to get to a place and shut the playground of the devil. Because strongholds are the, the devil's playground. And we can shut them. Bless the name of the Lord. <coughs> Hallelujah. We can shut them. Tell your neighbor we can shut them. But I think maybe the question that we are asking ourselves and we ask, and it is good for us to know, is that how can I detect a stronghold? How is it possible to detect a stronghold? And I want to say, yes, you can. You can detect a stronghold. Because the strongholds are derived, are, are, are derived from three sources. They come from three sources, and there could be more sources, but I want to talk about three sources. A stronghold may find root in experiences that are behind us. I, I said in this chat that one time I was going for an operation, and my operation was above the knee. But I had a friend of mine who had died whose operation was on the ankle. And um, so at that point I told you what I did. I knew if she died and the operation was an ankle and mine is above the knee, then I think mine is closer to the heart. So I gave my ATMs, all of them, to Alice and I was ready for anything. But of course I told you after the operation I asked for my card. <laughs> and, and, so, and she gave them back to me. She's, she, she was kind enough to give them back to me. But you see, strongholds can hold ourselves because of our past experiences. An experience that you went. If you listen to a preacher called Joyce Myers, you'll, you'll find out many times she talks about what happens in her past. And sometimes you wonder, why is she talking about it? Because she is talking about it to remind the devil that she is no longer there. 
Because a lot of time we can stay in a place and it is like we are there forever. It's like we are held captive forever. Our past experiences, and I tell you and I say again, I am not my past. <clears throat> I'm not my past. You know, sometimes I wonder how preachers take up take a cup of water when they are preaching, and I discovered today I, I, I they take like this. Thank you. Guys. <laughs> so you see, the past, the past has a tendency of holding us captive. Because if you look at your past, and I look at my past, and um, in our journeys, whatever we have gone, in one place, uh, the pastors are told about my past, and then um, I, I feel, I feel it's very interesting, that feeling, you know, the feeling that one day, that was me, you know. So uh, Bishop tells them that one time, I was a Matatu driver. Of course, they never told them I was the owner of the Matatu. I was not just a Matatu driver. I was the owner of the Matatu. But, but the, the point that um, caught me is that the fact that I was a driver, and I want to tell you this without, um, without being embarrassed, Matatu drivers are Matatu drivers, and they are guided by a spirit that is not found in any other driver. It's only found with Matatu drivers. So when he mentioned Matatu driver, I would feel that spirit. And I knew God delivered me from a spirit. And then Bishop Mark says that he was a, a Makanga that uh, was operating from Nakuru to Narok. Um, and also it's good for you to know, and at that point I also knew, Makangas had also a spirit. And to be delivered from that spirit, then that must be God. I don't know who you are yourself. But I want to thank God that God delivered you from that spirit. Because that experience, if it gets hold of you, you cannot move an inch. I am so glad that the Lord has set me free. You see, because the past, the past, singe ona debe ya mutu ni isame ezio. Bas, nisawa, tuwalafu nikaenda kwa matatu ambayo you turn, Asi lazima upige round about. Naweza ipigia mahali popote. Yaani hiyo roho hiyo nimekwambia. Na bado nilikuwa nimeokoka na nampenda Yesu. Lakini So as we, as as you get to that level you discover now no. God you are so great. I'm not bound by my past experience. Can you remember that boy that used to harass you, torment you and you know and then all of us sudden you want to feel like she can she or he can come and torment you again? Never. The Lord has delivered you. You are no longer there. And where you are, you're not going to be there tomorrow. Because this is the year of great overflow. Then I'm moving. Bless the name of the Lord. So some of the strongholds that come to us, they come and they find root in our experiences which are behind us. The things I used to do. The things, the places that I used to go. The friends that I used to keep. That you get to a point that that the, 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 the body wants to take you back. You know, I remember one time I was counseling somebody in church when I used to counsel. You know, there was one time I used to be the only person that used to do the premarital. So I used to go through and teach all these people the, all the lessons that you have. So I taught this couple the lessons. And um, this couple, I taught the lesson. Then the guy they were getting married, within me, I felt... They never loved each other. I don't know how, what you will do if people come to you and, and they are here. This is uh, Jimmy and Alice and you're the pastor. And you discover we don't love each other. I don't know what you will do. But at that point I told them, knowing that they will hate me forever, the rest of their lives. I just felt, I said, you people don't love each other. But there is a spirit of lust because of what you have been doing. That's what I told them. And when you get married, this spirit of lust, because it will not be there, what will happen? And they looked at each other. Then they asked, what do we do? I said, go and pray about it. But please, I'm not saying you don't get married. Hear me. I'm just saying now, here, you don't love each other. And if that is true, then go pray. And they said, pastor, you are right. 
we don't love each other. So I gave them time to go and pray. They prayed, they came back, they told me, you are right, we are not getting married. Let me tell you, a lot of time is, that past, there are people who go through the, the marriage process, but they don't love each other. What they have is lust. So when lust is overtaken and now you have ashes in your house, what next? You, you get the point. It's like you are craving for something, then when you have it, then what next? Remember the past can, can destroy some of us. You are married with your wife and you love her, but your past is still calling you out. You are still, the soul ties, the people that tied you up, you are still pursuing them here and there, and love cannot. I went to another wedding. Immediately after the wedding, we were going back home, we saw the young man who was getting married on the road with other girls and other boys. And I knew for sure it will not last. It never did. Yani we ulikuwa na suit kwa harusi. Tumekuwa kwa reception. Sasa a kilometer away huko 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 na wasichana na vijana wengine. Nikajua ule tumewaacha msichana huko na neti yake. Huyu. Akweli after some time it did not work. So strongholds they root themselves in experiences and I pray that God would help us to overcome the experiences that we have gone through. Some of them are off. Some of them are terrible. But we can overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We can overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the experience that you went through, you know sometimes you go through experience and we think that all men are the same. All men are not the same. We go through experience and we think all women are the same. All women are not the same. It is an experience you went and put it behind and keep going. It's like uh, saying I'll never go with the uh, OTC. And you know there was a time it was only OTC that would take you to Homabe, would take you to Migori, would take you to Kisi. There was only OTC that would take you to Embu. Wengine ya mwelewi, kulikuwa na OTC. Na ndio ilikuwa inafanya kazi. Bila kabla kahukura na jogo, na hizo zikine, na family. Kulikuwa na OTC. Data tanga inaenda, ilikuwa ruti na ruti zikine ilikuwa inaingia usiku. Atiko zao zinagongana kwa barabara sieni na OTC. Nitaenda tu. Are you getting the point? I will still travel. I will not walk to Kisumu from Nairobi because accidents are happening in Naivasha. <coughs> Experience can be a stronghold. And every time I have heard this from counselors, there are people they are married, but they cannot enjoy their married life, even sexually, because sometimes that feeling of the past comes and you think this man could be that man, you know, who maybe raped you or something and the whole process becomes chaotic. You are, you cannot. It becomes very difficult. The past can be a stronghold. May God help us to overcome the past. Secondly, a stronghold may also be rooted in the environment around us. And that's why sometimes I say change location, change place. Because sometimes that location, that environment can be that a stronghold for you. That nikama nyinyam unajua hii Kenya kuna watu hawajui kwa mfano nikihubiri miaka ile ya sabini tulienda kuhubiri West Pokot and after preaching West Pokot there was some lady that needed some medical attention and the missionary wanted to bring that lady to Nairobi for medical attention and we were in this Land Rover when we got to Kitale she thought Kitale is heaven now wait until we got to Eldoret. She said, now this is it. Now wait until we got to Nakuru. She said, wow. When we got to Nairobi, actually she believed now this is it because of the, the houses that were getting up to heaven. Even the lift, because where the missionary used to operate at the lift. Ata kuingia kwa hiyo lift. Kama roho yake inasimama kwanza. Some people. There are people. There are people actually from your village who don't know how Thika looks like. And the environment looks like they have condemned them. You know, some of them all what we need is to pick them 
and take them out of a darasha. Just take them to Yeri. And their life changes. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just picking somebody from uh, even Guanzia, and then you bring that person to water, and their mind just opens up. They see, wow, this is it. Because you know, when you come to water, there are many people who do different kind of business, you know? So you can have anything to do and people change their lives. So what I'm saying is that an environment can be a place that can be a strong wall to some of us and all what we need is to come out from that environment. Amen. Now we talk, we talk. See, we talk, we talk, we talk. And I thank God for some of you. I have said in this church, when you go back to the village, Sasu <laughs> Anaweka kwa basi. Anawaleta Kenya, Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Anawaikiza kwa tege. Anawauliza. Wewe, siku moja unaweza edesha hii. Uto tukitoto tukitoka pale. Eh? Uwezi <laughs> kutufinya kule sana. So maybe even some of you, all what you need is that village, that school you went to. Just get some burden a little bit. And just take some of those boys and girls, just outside a little bit. Not very far from Piakanja to Niri town. It's not very far. Actually, they can even walk. You can walk with them from Piakanja to Niri town. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. It, it is just to expose them to something else. Because who changed? It's you. Why? Because of the environment. So there are some people, their stronghold is the environment they find themselves. What is considered as normal and acceptable by the world around us may be in direct conflict with the word of God. Apart from Christ, these beliefs can become entrenched in our mind and they can form strongholds where the enemy uses to keep us in bondage. Kabisa, kabisa. That you believe. Like, like um, when, I, when we travel to the U.S., there are some places you go to preach and people actually don't believe that the clothes I'm wearing, I never bought them in New York. They are, they are Americans. You know, we think every American is a Soma. We are 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 a Soma. I understand. So it's very amazing. So there's some of those places you go and you, you wonder. Why? Because some of these people don't move. They don't know. Actually, they don't know even their country. You tell them you have been to Great Canyon. Canyon and they wonder, is that in America or in uh, Canyon in, 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 uh, in Kenya? Whatever it is. You know, the, the rocky mountains and so on. What I'm saying is this. Because of that environment, they are also bound by strongholds. May the Lord release some of us from the environment that we find ourselves. Because it can be a stronghold that hinders us from getting to the next level and receiving the great and mighty overflow. A stronghold may also be driven or maybe uh, can come from or drive from a system of error within us. Error. False info information input produces false conclusion in our thinking. So sometimes you, you, it is the information that you have. Some information that you have could be wrong, but you still believe it is right. Especially in the world that we live in. There are some information that the politicians have used towards us. And every five years we fight each other. But they are not true. Actually, they are not true at all. They're not true. They're not true. You take a small child, a kikuyu boy, small boy, take that boy to China. 
when the boy is, is planning to read and write. That boy will be Chinese. The skin will be Kenyan. And the boy will be Chinese. In other words, what we put in here is actually what has formed some of our opinions. Query Kabisa. When, when, when a politician says you are uh, marginalized and then you believe you are marginalized, then you become marginalized. But it is when you travel out and you say, Hi, hapa ni mwea. Hey, kuna nini? Mwea kuna nyanya. Situnanua nyanya pale na mchele. Wakati ya kukua nyanya na mchele, hiyo ilikuwa ni wilderness ingini. It, there is nothing like believing some of those things. I'm not much. In actual fact, as a believer, you should believe you cannot be marginalized because the Lord has redeemed you. You walk in a different level. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. False information. False information can bind you. You know, I remember I, I, I said this one time here that um, my father. My father was from that generation that they never could not, never ever ask for food. And my mother was not allowed to ask, ever ask, whether New Korea. <laughs> because that meant if you're asking him whether he will eat, it simply means you are doubting he has eaten somewhere. Now that can be war. That always became war. So what used to happen is, and some of you, I can see you smiling, is that your father, whether he had eaten out, the food was to be brought there. And because his food was a little bit special, we sat around there and looked at him. And by the grace of God, he would pretend that he's so serious. Hey, come on that it is me looking at him, but what he's trying to do is to empty because he has already eaten somewhere. <laughs> Are you hearing the point? Yes. So, I thought I would do it in my house. <laughs> oh man, your guess is right. It didn't work. I slept hungry. Because the question is, New Korea. If not, the food is put in the fridge. Now some of you may spare you. It can't work. What what used to work then, it cannot work now. Now we have to ask each other. Utakula. Kwasab kama uli and we came. Kwasab wakuna watoto wa kukundura macho. Kwasab chakula ni the same. You know? Chakula si the same. The rest False information, and they, they come into us and we believe that they are true, and they become stronghold in us that refuses us to even penetrate and enter into this great overflow because of some of the things that we have come to believe. Bless the name of the Lord. How, now, how can I detect some of these strongholds? Many times we have accommodated a stronghold for, us long, for so long that our personalities are identified with it. Yani you have lived and believed until when people look at you, they call you that stronghold. And we say things like this. Well, I just can't help it. That's just the way I am. Have you said something like that? 
You know, it's a stronghold and it will keep you there because it's a way of saying, I don't want to change. That's the way I am. Bless the name of the Lord. Our problem is we have acted in an abnormal way for so long that abnormal seems normal to us. Yani, baka ukawa if you. May God deliver us from that kind of a strong hold. Some of the categories that are there, some, not all, but just some, we become, or we become obsessed with some things. It's like getting some addiction. Some of us are addicted with the fear, obsessed with anxieties. But you can also pull them and put them into specific areas. Greed, anger, pride, bitterness, jealousy, lust, resentment, negativism, pessimism, condemnation, guilt, confusion, diffusiveness, and faithfulness. The list is not exhaustive, but it should offer some directive or direction into dealing with the sum of these strongholds. Let me say something that some of you disagree, because I, I like also speaking to people and seeing them disagree to some truth. Because a lot of us do this. An example of detecting yourself or another in an area of pride or self-asserting itself, if you want to, and some of you would pick it even today. Maybe you did it today before we came in. Uh, maybe I did it today. You can recognize it as the inner desire to talk when someone else is talking. Right. It's like, within you, you want to talk, but somebody else is talking. Or oh, some of you would say, no, 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 Bishop, because I'm a we Then you want to assert yourself, you? No. Or to tell of your experience when someone else is describing their experience. In other words, the topic was not your experience. The topic was their experience. Eh? But as you hear their experience, you want to talk about your experience. Because you think your experience, it has to a yake. Sour. Hati unajua mimi kuokoka, nilikuwa sugu. Alafu unamaliza. Na anasema hapana mimi kwa sugu sugu. You feel like you want to, you know. I don't know whether you have gotten to a place where children are. Eh? Sometimes we behave like children. Si, si watoto. Bishop hii gari ni yako? Eh, ni yangu. Baba yangu wako na gari kubwa kuliko hii. And it's a child I know the parents. Kana kengine kana kuja kana zama hapana hata baba yangu wana nunuwa kubwa kuliko hii. Yani hapo ni kila mtu. Bishop gari yako ni ya pesa ngapi? So I say. Ah, ya baba yangu ni ya pesa nyingi kuliko hiyo. And that's how some of us behave. And you can know the desire to assert. No, it's like somebody is giving a testimony of a miracle that God did for them. Oh, bwana nilitendea mujiza nikahama X nikaenda Y. Alafu nayo nataka kumwambia sasa kwenda Y, si ungeenda Z. Si tulitoka Y, tukaruka X, tukaenda Z. Whatever it is. You can detect the assertion that we want to assert on other people, the pride that we have even by some very little things. Oh, of you are impatient to explain something when another one is telling how they do it. In other words, mutu wanaeleza vile ya napikaga chapati. Na wewe, you cannot wait. <laughs> Just to let them know. Chapati hai pikagi hivi. But you see, let me tell you the joke about the whole thing. Chapati hiwe ngumu, ni chapati. Hiwe soft, ni chapati. Lakini moja ni ngumu, engine ni soft.
you ever cooked a cake for the first time and you are not a good one? Yes. I tried one time. My cake was hard. The soft thing was inside. <laughs> but it was still a cake. And I've never baked another <laughs> ever since I gave up on that. So we all have the tendency actually to exhort self and becomes a stronghold. Phrases that we will give us away are, I can't see how anybody would want to, and then you explain. In other words, you're saying, no way. I don't care what anyone says, this is the way I. You would think they would have better than whatever. Let me tell you what I would do. You know what I think a person ought to? All those are areas that you can detect. Oh God, help me. I'm talking to people here that actually pride and self-assertion is a thing. But how do we demolish the stronghold? Because I think, I think the key word is how do we pull these strongholds down. The summary of our text where we started, we are not to war in the flesh. Because the weapons of our warfare are mighty. Our weapons are empowered by God. Our weapons pull down strongholds. In other words, I should not fight the flesh. You see, some, some people when they are praying for others, you, you might see the flesh at work. Stoker! You know, and then you are pushing the person, the poor person. The power of God. There was no power of God there. What there was is that there was muscle power and you used, you used it. And a few years ago, they had even drived something. I don't know what they used to call it, but somebody would put a an, an handkerchief with some dawa kidoko kwa koti yapa, kwa kwa shati yapa. Then you get hold of you, pray for you, bring you very close. Hakuna kusu. Kuma hapo, haki kwa jilia. Unalala ka usikizi ka zuri. Masaka. Yani the power of God. Shindwe. And the battle that we are fighting is not carnal. But it is mighty. It pulls sickness down, it pulls stronghold down, but I don't have to push it. Sio lazima ni kutege. Bana. Na hapa watu wanguka. And I thank God that none of us pushes people. But people fall. But falling does not mean the power of God has. Sometimes it is you and the weakness that maybe you are so prepared. Yani ulikuwa atakufu wa mbele. So we unataka tu kulala mbele za mwenyezi mu? Sao. Nao wengine wakiti hata akitua naeza anguka, anakaa sawa sawa. Anapea na kitua, na anatichimbia kidogo. So either of those, not, none of them is right because this one who is doing like this, maybe the Lord wants them to, to receive something, but they have already made up their mind. strongholds because you need to attack the strongholds in your life, you should be aware of this fact. You are battling the enemy for the spiritual success of your future. Not your past. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Your past is gone. But it's, I'm battling for my future. Because my future I want it to be safe in the hands of the Lord. You should also know that satanic forces will wage a personal assault against you to prevent it. So in other words, the devil wants to make sure it doesn't happen. You remember the story of Daniel? Daniel has prayed. And for 21 days, uh, they, there is a battle going on up in heaven because the answer is coming, but the devil is refusing the answer to come. And I'm saying, may there be no devil that can hold your answer in the mighty name of Jesus. We're going to wage war and our, our answers are going to come, including my answer for my healing. You see, Satan is not a dummy. 
He knows full well that those strongholds in your life are his only aid in holding you back from taking full authority over him. So he knows. He knows once you destroy those strongholds, he cannot get hold of you as a believer. And you need to know then as a believer, you do have authority over the devil and his demonic forces. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. The devil is the foe that has been defeated, disarmed, and disabled. Hebrews 2 and verse 14, in Amplified, he say, He himself, in a similar manner, partook of the same nature, that by going through death, he might bring to naught and make of no effect him who had the power of death, that is, the devil. So as we enter into demolishing strongholds, it is to be from the possession of confident assurance that we are going to win. There is no way we are going to lose. We are not at a disadvantage in dealing with the strongholds in our lives. We are going to win. We have been given power over all the power of the enemy. If we believe the word of God, the enemy's power has been destroyed when Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus made a zero out of him. The devil is not a big deal. Jesus is the big deal. We can do all things through him. Amen. Paul is saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <clears throat> Our spiritual weapon is the written word. Brothers, I told you, and sisters, I told you when I started that the devil is not actually after many things. He is after that word that you pick. For example, maybe I'm talking about deliverance and you pick the word deliverance. From sickness and evil and so on, and you pick that deliverance from that particular area. The devil would like to fight that one. Not everything else. Just that statement. Just like he tried to tell Jesus when the whole world has heard that this is my son of whom I'm all pleased. Isn't it? Well, in, the, in the baptism. But then when he's taken to the wilderness, the, devil, the first thing the devil wants to ask him is, if you are the son of God. So he wants to challenge the sonship. That was the key. In the garden of Eden, the devil comes. He's challenging what? What God had told this guy. This guy was told you can eat everything, but that one don't eat. So the devil comes to tell him that, we, that one which you are told not to eat. Why are you really told not to eat? And you know the conversation that went around. The devil is after your word. Tell your neighbor this. Neighbor, it is your word. Some of you, God wants you to prosper. So the word prosperity is key. And the devil wants to kill that one. Because that is your word. Some of us is healing. Some of us is open doors for education. That word is where the devil wants to come and fight. Let us know that we can win by the word. Because Amen. what Jesus told the devil is, it is written. It is written. And please, know where it is written. Know where it is written. Otherwise, you might quote a scripture that uh, was introduced in the Bible by Jomo Kenyatta, which says, God helps those that help themselves. And I have heard preachers say it is written. Where? Now, that was a statement that was made by Jomo Kenyatta. Gaya Taitha Gia. We it here. And there's nothing like that. It's nothing like that. If you can help yourself, you don't need God. When we come to God, we must know. And we, have, we come to Him by faith, and we must know that He is the one who rewards. He's the one who gives. Oh, yes. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. So John 8, 32 says, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth of the word is our legal grounds for liberty. So that I can be set free in this year of great overflow. The stronghold that can hold me. It is written, well, we'll get the devil anytime, every, every time, everywhere, we tell him it is written. Number two, the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. I was so glad when we met in Akuru and Twimisim was trying to help us understand that Jesus, even Ethiopians, a lot of them, are called Jesus. Some people from South America are called Jesus. We even had a Jesus one time in church. I brought a Jesus one time. You saw a Jesus in church. 
So for us, we have to identify what are we talking about? Which Jesus are you talking about? Is it Jesus from Ethiopia or Jesus from South America? Or Jesus from Israel? So Bishop told us, the devil only fears when we remind him it is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Because there is only one son mm. of the living God. Yes. So again, sometimes we want to say, Devil, shindwe katika jina la Yesu na kuangalia. Shindwe katika jina la Yesu gani? Muisiopia. Yesu gani? You know, even in, in Kisumu, there was a Jesus. Ama mujui kulikuwa na na Yesu na alifariki. Najua ikina msumbagi, msumbagi vizungi. Hata huyo. Huyo huyo ni huyo ni upande wa Maragoli, waluia, walikuwa na Jehova. Wako na Jehova wao. Nafikiri hata nyinyi wa kikuu mnaweza kuwa na kangaikeno mahali kalikufa. You know, it, the thing is the name of Jesus Christ. Philippians 2:9 and 10. Wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. That are the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth and that every time could confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the name, in the name means with the approval of. In other words, when we say the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, we are saying in the approval of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. In the name. <coughs> Excuse me. When we boldly speak and act upon our belief in the name, of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, the strongholds will be demolished. There's no stronghold that can withstand that. Amen. The second thing that Twimisig told us, which I also believe is true, is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Which Jesus again? Jesus, the Son of the Living God. The blood that he, sh he shed. Ephesians 1, verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. 1 John 1 and 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, uh, his son, cleanses us from all sin. It is the blood of the covenant. Fourthly, the Holy Spirit. And I am so glad that we are looking at the Holy Spirit uh, in this month of February, the Holy Spirit. Illuminate. He's the one who causes us to see it clearly. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit makes the truth of God relevant to our life. The Holy Spirit inspires the word of God. And that it is he who must interpret the word. Fifthly, the word of our testament. I tell you there is nothing like which the devil fears. When we don't exaggerate, it is our testimony. Oh, my testimony is so powerful. Because nobody can refuse it. For example, if I said today I took some watermelon in the morning, apart from my family members, the rest of you have to believe me. You cannot resist or fight. watermelon. That's why the testimony is so powerful. Without exaggeration, I know a lot of us exaggerate. They, they overcame him, the devil. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And it ends up by saying, and they loved not their lives unto death. So their testimony was so powerful. We bless the name of the Lord. The word of our testimony is our agreement with the written word in the name of Jesus. I want to bring this to a conclusion by, if you forget everything else that I've said up to this session, which was our second part, please don't fail to pick this. Our part in pulling down strongholds, three things. Number one, we are to receive the light of the word of God. Why do we say so? Because the word exposes the stronghold. I want to say again, we are to receive the light of the word of God. 
Because the word of God exposes the strong. You want the stronghold to be exposed in your life? Then the word of God. Read the word of God. Assimilate the word of God. Receive the word of God. Talk about it. And what it will do, because it is the word of God, it will expose the stronghold in your life or around you. Secondly, we are to apply the word of God. To apply the word of God. The first one, we receive the word of God. The second, we are to apply the word of God. Why do we do so? Because the word of God opposes the stronghold. The word of God opposes the stronghold. So I have to apply it. Because when I apply it, it opposes the stronghold. It doesn't matter what stronghold it is. The word of God opposes the stronghold. May the word of God in your life oppose the stronghold in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, we are to exact the truth of the word of God. Why? Because declaring the word of God disposes the stronghold. You know, if there is anything, when I declare the word of God in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, when I declare it, when I read it, when I sing about it, when I talk about it, what that word of God is, it's able to depossess the stronghold. The stronghold cannot withstand the word of God. Remember the three things I've talked about of the word of God. One, we receive the light of the word of God. Why? Because the word of God exposes the stronghold. Two, we are to apply the word of God because the word of God opposes the stronghold. And finally, we are to exact the truth of the word of God. Why? Because declaring the word of God opposes the stronghold. Blessed, blessed be the name of the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This morning we are so grateful that dear Father, we can overcome the devil. And indeed, we have overcome the devil. And we overcome him, dear Father, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We overcome the devil by your word, by the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of the living God. Yes, we shall overcome the devil by our lifestyle. In the mighty name of Jesus. I don't know my brother, my sister, but maybe as I spoke, you felt there is a stronghold somewhere. And you feel that you want not only to overcome it, to expose it, but you want to destroy it. There is an area, a stronghold. It, it could be a very tiny little stronghold, maybe a little habit, maybe some exposure that you exposed to yourself, maybe some little truth that you have believed. It is not, no, it wasn't, it is, it has become normal, but it is, was an abnormal truth that you have believed. But today you are saying, yes, Lord, set me free. If that is the cry from your heart, I want to ask you to stand on your two feet as we bring our service to a close. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, demons will have to flee away. Who can tell? Jesus, we have the victory in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We have the victory, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In what we have to be. Jesus, Jesus.
Jesus, we have been victorious.